Sometimes Christians say things that they think are kind or humble or comforting when they're in fact insulting and degrading. They don't know they're being rude. They might say anything from telling us they'll pray for us to urging us to repent and come to their God, which they may think is nice but doesn't really sit well with us, to telling us our troubles or sicknesses are really a blessing. When I was much younger, late 20s or early 30s, a 16-year-old girl in our church went to a party. While she was there, she got drunk for the first time. She had no way of knowing that alcohol was something she couldn't tolerate. She became ill and died at the party from a bad reaction to the alcohol. When it was talked about in the church vestibule later, one Christian man said, There but for the grace of God go I. This man meant well. He was trying to be understanding and non-judgmental. He was even attempting to be meek and lowly, admitting that he himself had been involved in activities that his God wouldn't approve of, maybe even getting drunk. He, his heart was in the right place. He was saying, I could have been in her shoes. I'm no better than she was. We shouldn't judge her harshly for getting drunk. And those are all good comments. But what else was he saying with his there but for the grace of God go I? He was saying, hey, I could have got myself into fixes too in my day. But thankfully, the God of the universe wouldn't allow it to happen to me. I'm so special that he looked down on me with grace and favor. He made sure that what befell this poor young girl didn't come down on me. Yes, I'm as bad as she was, but he just loves me more and grants more grace to me and protects me better. What else could he be saying? This man most likely also said to the girl's parents, I'll pray for you. If he didn't, I'm sure a lot of other Christians did. Hey, even I might have. I knew this girl pretty well. I cared about her, and I was hurt when I heard that she was dead. And honestly, probably thought the same thing the man said. It wasn't like I hadn't become drunk at parties myself, and at the time I would certainly have given Yahweh credit for allowing me to drive too fast sometimes or get myself in other bad situations without harm. If the man or I said we would pray for the parents, we thought we were being nice, but the truth is we weren't. First, why would anybody want to turn to the perpetrator of a harmful act to find relief? According to Yahweh's followers, he allows or causes bad things to happen in our lives, but then swoops in like Johnny on the spot to help us bear up under the adverse conditions. Thank you, but no. If a man comes into my house and stabs me, he's the last person I'll go to for comfort, sympathy, or help. While I'm lying there bleeding, am I really going to look up lovingly at him and say, Oh, please, kind sir, help me feel better about what you've done to me. And he's the last one I'll beg to take me to the hospital. Why would he even do it? probably take me into the hills and dump me out for the wolves and the snakes to finish me off. It might not be so bad to say, you know, if we say time and chance happen to everyone and maybe Yahweh will help us if we ask. But if we say Yahweh is in control of everything and it all happens for a reason and he kills our loved one but then tries his best to help us be okay with that, no. Second, when Christians tell a non-Christian that they're praying for their situation, the non-Christian sees that as nothing. They don't believe in the gods of the Bible. They view them the same way they view Zeus or Odin or Santa Claus. So Christians are actually saying, when I go to bed tonight, before I go to sleep, I'll think about your plight. I hope you feel it and that my thoughts make something good happen for you. Third, I would like for one Christian, just one, 
to prove to me that prayer has ever brought any change. I don't mean some tale that their grandma's best friend's uncle's first wife's sixth cousin three times removed told. And I don't mean they prayed and something happened. I don't pray and something happens. I mean real proof. A limb was restored. A, a person came back to life. A house that burnt down suddenly materializes again. I want real evidence. And I want documented evidence. Not stories from a long time ago that supposedly happened in a kingdom far, far away that we have absolutely no proof of. I won't hold my breath. Fourth, when I tell the parents of a dead girl that, we're, you know, that I'm praying for them, I'm saying, my God apparently doesn't answer your prayers because I'm sure you've prayed for your daughter night and day from the time she was born. But he will probably answer my prayers. You know, because of all that grace he bestows upon me that he didn't bestow upon you and your daughter. It stands to reason that he pays attention to me. It's the same thing when we praise Yahweh for the good in our lives in front of people who are suffering. Thank you for not burning my house down when you burnt my neighbors down. You sent that wind in a different direction because you love me more. Okay, nobody says that last part, but they might as well. I was having some medical problems one time, and a Christian said to me, Get right with God and your problems will go away. That's a pretty bad thing to say. And especially from someone who's had as many health issues as I've had. And of course, it's a lie, too. Christians have as many health problems as anybody else does. But really, is it worse than saying, there but for the grace of God go I? After all, saying my health would be better if I straighten up my life and saying you might have your legs chopped off, too, if y'all didn't extend grace to you in a way you didn't extend it to me, are basically the same th insult. Yahweh could have given grace to me for my health issues the same as he could have given grace to the person who drove too fast and had a car wreck and got their legs chopped off. Either way you say such things, it's cruel and demeaning. Yes, one sounds worse to think about it, but they're both the same and unhelpful and harsh. And speaking of Yahweh showing grace, Think about what Christians say is the reason they go to heaven while others end up in hell. You know what they say. They would never declare that they deserve heaven. No, they are nothing. They are evil. They are worthy of death. So why do they go to heaven? Well, there's special grace bestowed upon them. They go because of their God's mercy. He doesn't demand justice for all the evil they have done in their lives, he looks over it. He casts it as far as the east is from the west. But then when you ask them why their God should, would send anyone to hell, what do they say? We all know what they say. Yahweh must have justice. Justice is all far important when it comes to the evil committed by others. But Christians are granted grace and mercy. Mercy for them and justice for everybody else. Of course, Christians say they repented and accepted Jesus as their Savior. That's why Jeffrey Dahmer can be in heaven. He repented. Then he was granted mercy and grace. Justice blew out the window because Jeffrey bowed down and kissed Yahweh's butt. Yes, as I've said before, it's not about what we do or don't do. It's about whether we kiss Yahweh's butt. We all know that, and Jeffrey's situation proves it. We can do anything we want and repent and receive mercy and grace if we bow down. Or we can be as good as we can possibly be, yet justice demands that we be punished anyway because we didn't bow down. And some of us apparently are granted even more grace just because. The person not granted the extra grace may be just as obedient to Yahweh as we are. But he simply refuses to give that person grace. I drive 90 miles an hour and survive. Someone else does it and dies. I receive grace while the other person didn't 
or so some would say. I mean, fundamental Christians do believe that Yahweh is involved in everything, right? You pick your nose, and he makes sure you don't go too deep and burst a vein or something. Seriously, is that ridiculous? I think I mentioned before that a Christian woman told me Yahweh had given her and me a lovely day for our outing. As if he held off the rain just for us. Meanwhile, somebody else may have wanted rain. The girl I mentioned is certainly not the first teenager to get drunk. Many, many teenagers... Christians and non-Christians alike get drunk and survive. But a Christian man apparently thought and even said that this girl died because she didn't receive grace. No, he didn't word it that way. But if you say your God saved you from the same situation he didn't save someone else from, you're saying you received grace and the other person didn't. Surely that's obvious. I used to make the there but for the grace of God go I statement too I used to tell people I prayed for them shoot I used to say that all things work together for good to those who love God meaning of course that if things don't work together for your good you obviously don't love God and yes I believed I was being sweet and humble and generous with my words but I was not I was being outrageously arrogant and cruel you know, Christians, it's better to leave your God and the Bible out of conversations you have with those who are hurting. And I mean, even when you're trying to ease the pain or sorrow of other Christians. I was a Christian when my son died, and one of my Christian friends said, God had to give up his son too. I responded by saying, no, God got his son back. Her words didn't help at all and actually upset me. They struck me as being unsympathetic, even though I knew she meant well. She was trying to comfort me, but didn't know how. I'm not trying to be critical here. I'm trying to help both you as a Christian, as well as those to whom you want to give comfort and support. If you really want to present your God in a good light and cause people to think you care about them, don't be setting yourself above them. You will provide more consolation and show more love to others if you simply say, I am sorry this has happened to you. What can I do to make it better? Bible verses and outrageous statements of any grace you think you receive offer no solace or a relief. Speak from your own heart. I promise you that you will do more good that way. Comments like, there but for the grace of God go, why are a slap in the face? And for crying out loud, please don't say what a Christian said just the other day. Here's what it was. People don't complain because they have problems. People have problems because they complain. You don't have money to feed your children? You must have complained too much. Your child died and you're grieving? Your grief is the result of your complaining. You fell off a ladder and broke your back? Mm, stop complaining. Your back will miraculously heal. This is a lie. People don't have problems due to their complaints. People complain about problems they already have. Now, sure, if you complain too much on the job, you might lose your job. But to make a general statement saying that our problems come because we complain, that's crazy and it's hurtful. We all know that. I know it, you know it, and you know I know you know it. I sincerely believe, as I said, that most of the time when Christians make ignorant and thoughtless comments that don't help and in fact hurt, they aren't aware of what they're doing. And I suppose people who live in glass houses can even throw stones without realizing it. But please... Stop and think before you open your mouth and let words tumble out. You just make a bad situation worse. Better to say nothing than to add to someone's pain. Thanks to my patrons. Thanks to my subscribers. Thanks to my commenters. And thanks to all of you for watching. Bye.